So let's begin. First, log in using your assigned credentials. Login credentials can be created for a store manager to access one store, a regional manager to access multiple stores, or someone at headquarters to access all stores in an estate. There's also an admin option to allow access to the settings tab. Within the dashboard section of the customize tab, each user can select the four reports that are of most interest to them. If desired, select a new report for one of the four dashboard report areas and select save. Returning to the dashboard, note that the report in the bottom right hand corner of the dashboard has changed after I modified my dashboard preferences. Note the filtering options at the top of the screen. I can look at a specific division or region, I can select a specific store, or I can filter based on a specific device brand, like Samsung or Apple. I can also select a specific date range. Then, select the refresh button to implement your filtering options. I can further refine my reports based on the chart by criteria, and I can sort by ascending or descending order. I can choose to present my data in a bar chart or a line chart format. If I want to dig deeper into the data, I can either select one of the icons on the left-hand navigation, or I can expand one of the reports on my dashboard by clicking on the box in the upper right-hand corner of the report. Next, I'm going to select the Planogram tab. Within the Percent Compliant report, you can see that store number 300 is significantly less compliant than the other four stores, so I'll likely want to dig into what's going on in that store. On the flip side, I see that store number 301 is 97% compliant, so I know I don't have to spend time on 301 unless I want to dig into what they are doing right that may be replicated at my less compliant stores. This is a valuable tool to help me better understand which stores need extra attention to improve their compliance. Moving on to the fixture details report, this is where I can see planogram information, where devices should be by fixture and position number compared to where they actually are. Note that I can sort based on status and bring all of the non-compliant positions represented by a red X to the top. By selecting missing devices, I can see that the LG G6 is not on display in two of the five stores. On the summary tab, I can see the models that are not in at least one of the five stores in the Amsterdam region. And on the store detail tab, I can see the specific stores that do not have those devices on display. It's incredibly powerful to identify specific planogram issues in stores across the retail estate, all from my desk at headquarters. As always, you can sort by clicking on the column headings as well. Now I'll move on to the activity tab and look at the average lifts per hour report. I'm going to select brand from the chart by options on the right hand side and sort in descending order. Note that Apple has the highest lifts per hour. Also note that Google has a surprisingly low number of lifts per hour. When I look at the duration per lift report, I'm going to select brands and sort by descending order. Note here that while we saw a low number of lifts per hour from Google in the last report, Google actually has the second highest duration per lift of all brands, suggesting that once a customer picks up a Google device, they tend to be more interested in it than with most other brands. Maybe Google has poor positioning in the store? Next, I'll select the lifts to report, select stores, and sort by descending order. This time, note that store number 300 has significantly more lifts than the other four stores, so it may be worth investigating why that is. Is it simply that the store has a better location, or are they running some type of promotion or other activity that is driving user engagement? This is a good time to point out that many of the Insight reports have an export data option that allows me to download data to a spreadsheet. In this case, I may want to compare store activity data to POS data to better understand if store number 300's activity is translating into sales. Moving on to security, let's look at the alarms report. I'll search by model and sort by descending order. Note that, perhaps not surprisingly, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus has the most alarms of any model. Selecting the alarms per hour report, 
I'll now select stores and sort by descending order and see that store number 301 has more alarms than the others. It is probably a good idea to follow up with this store manager to identify the cause of this and improve the in-store customer experience. Again, it may be a good idea to download this data and compare it to POS data to see if it's impacting sales. Now I'm going to select the alarms timed out report, select stores, and sort in descending order. Notice that not only does store 301 have the most alarms per hour, it also has the most alarms that are timing out. A call to store 301's retail manager is definitely in order. Notifications is where I can see the emails or texts that have been sent to me based on the criteria I've created under Customize Notifications. Selecting Customize from the left-hand navigation bar and Notifications, I can see where my existing notifications criteria reside. By selecting Create, I can create a new notification based on my preferred criteria. Click the X in the upper right-hand corner to get out of Create Notification. Settings is limited to those with admin credentials. We'll just briefly look in here. Store maintenance, for example, is where every store in the estate that is using Insight is set up. By clicking on store at number 302 and then clicking on active devices at the top of the screen, I can see planogram information that is kept within the system. I hope this tour of the InView Insight user interface has given you a good overview of Insight's capabilities and has you thinking about all the ways that it can provide value to you and your organization.